my name is A Max with the facts. You're now watching the AWF series, and of course, we make the unknown known. That's right. And right now, I'm here at Tai Chung, Taiwan, and sitting to my sorry, standing to my right, he goes by the name of Adam Menon. All right. How are you? Very good. Wait, is it Adam or Ardosh? I go by Adam in Taiwan. It's easier. All right, fine. Adam, it is. And right now, uh, we're actually in a special location, uh, like just five minutes that way. Um, is, is actually part of the Jazz Festival. Did you know about that? I saw the signs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of the Jazz Festival or...? Yeah, I was, I'm a fan of big crowds and good food and there seems to be lots of both. Alright. So, um, Adam, may you just tell us uh, what do you do and why did you decide to come to Taiwan? So, uh, I'll, I'll answer the second one first. All right. So, I came to Taiwan just for a year. Mm -hmm. and this was about 15 years ago mm. uh, and I came originally just to teach English like many expats that end up here okay um, but then that one year turned into three years and I was enjoying the teaching process and while I was here one of the reasons I chose Taiwan is I wanted to learn Mandarin because Mandarin of course is the most popular language in the world of course so uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to learn it while I'm here but I found as I was learning, so there's two things. One was I was busy with teaching, so I didn't have time to attend actual classes. Right. Because that's time I could be teaching. Mm -hmm. So I kept trying to use uh, online methods, podcasts, CDs, books, whatever I could find. But I found that most of them were designed by native Chinese speakers. Right. But then how they learned the language is different than how an English speaker would want to learn. Like the challenges we have are different than the challenges they had growing up as their native language of course so as I was learning I kept thinking you know if I was teaching the language I wouldn't teach it this way I would teach this other thing first I wouldn't even talk about this so it just kept going in the back of my mind and also I have a background in computer science uh -huh. so then I thought you know what if I put those two together and I create a course the way I wish someone had taught me Chinese okay so I just put it out there just to see what would happen maybe people won't take me seriously why is this guy teaching us Chinese but then I put it out there and people seem to like the format it's different than what you normally see mm -hmm. and then I slowly transitioned to doing that uh, full-time which is what I still do today all right I think I, I think I can actually use that method because I'm also a part-time English teacher mm -hmm. and uh, although I like teaching you know I like podcasting and media more sure so um, hopefully um, I can find I can, I can find a way to create something here um, to focus more on like what I'm good at mm -hmm. just like what you did right here in Taiwan Was it actually a little bit tough to like do your own thing here in the beginning? Uh, do you mean like in terms of like visas and No, no, just building, oh, no, things, like, no, like building your own business uh, sure. here in Taiwan like was it was it tough in the beginning? But then you know eventually of course you said that you you found a way to like sustain your business right. here um, But just tell us like the beginning process sure so I want to learn myself. Yeah, so now one advantage that we have in this day and age is you can start these internet businesses mm -hmm. like previously a traditional business required you to set up shop and have equipment and staff and be sitting there spending hours and you have to have a lot of funds like if you want to start a restaurant or something you have to have a lot of money to put into those things and you don't know if you're gonna succeed or not and where should we get that money from exactly if you don't know if you don't have that money that rules out a lot of people who might otherwise be successful <laughs> so one advantage with the internet is people without a lot of money who have tons of ideas have the opportunity to do something without having to spend a lot of money so when I started the site it was a podcast and even today everything you need to start a podcast can be done oh no what I hate that see that what are you pointing at? It's a B. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, I hate that. I'm sorry. No, like in our previous interview with Sean Bettison, uh, we had another B wasp situation. We need to try and reduce Ooh. the amount of. You see that? What is it? Oh, it's a big B. B wasp. Oh, I hate that. Okay, it's fine. Hopefully. Hopefully it won't come over here. If yeah. it does, I'm going that way. Yeah, I'm going that way, so I'm actually going to run. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> oh. And... Yeah. It's still so. far away, unless you want to move. 
Uh, all right. So, well, anyway, that's that's part of the uh, comedy of my show too. Like, you know, when random stuff happens, we just have to go along with it. Okay. Yeah. But you don't like bees, right? I'm good. You're good. I can speak Chinese, so <laughs> should be all right. You speak Chinese to the bee, and it'll work. Oh, they're locals, so. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you had there's a lot of I find there's a lot of expats who've been in Taiwan for an extended period, whose Chinese is fairly limited. Uh huh. So one thing I found when I took the step. It's possible to live here and live a very comfortable life without being able to speak Chinese or just having limited Chinese. Mm -hmm. There is enough English out there that a lot of people are fine. Okay. But I do find if you do learn some Chinese, it opens doors and opportunities that wouldn't be available elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You meet a lot more people. You get to have a lot more experiences that are normally closed if you just stay within the English-speaking only community. Right. So. Uh, for those people who've been here for a while whose Chinese isn't at the level they would like it to be, it is something I would recommend. Get it up there because you have an op. In fact, on my site, the majority of students who learn Chinese from me are in countries that are English speaking countries and they have a different problem. They learn Chinese, but they don't get the chance to practice what they've learned of course. because they're in an English speaking area. Right. Whereas we here, we have tons of opportunity to practice. So but it's a shame if you're here and not taking advantage of that. Well, I mean, well, I, I will say this. I, I'm not going to say it's, I have 50% shame, but I also have a 50% excuse. Mm -hmm. Now, my excuse is that I spend most of my hours uh, teaching my own language sure. instead of actually learning it. Yeah. And number two, you know, making my podcast. So sure. it's like, like I actually had, so that is my excuse. Most of my hours is doing something else. Now, of course, if I like find a way to make my schedule more available, I would love to learn the language itself. Sure. But, however, yeah. the other 50% is that I did take your first, your initial idea that you mentioned about buying a book, buying a CD, um, and learning that way, which I have, you know, so I'll actually, I can actually read basic text mm -hmm. in Mandarin, not, you know, not something, you know, terribly complicated, but there are like certain texts here and there. If you put this one symbol and this, two, this other symbol together, sure. I can actually understand what that symbol is. Um, also, I can actually, I can actually write basic uh, Mandarin too. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, you know, when I did study the, like the book, um, I actually under, I actually knew what the numbers were. So I know like Yi San Si, I know um, seasons, I know like the days of the week, I Sin Ji He, Sin Ji Er, Sin Ji San. You know, Wuda Ming Zi Shi. But I also, but all, but I learned all of that from the book. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, so, I mean, it's slow. It's a slow process, but at least I'm learning something. At least I'm gaining something, and not gaining anything at yeah. all. So. So the advantage, one advantage we have today. So when I first came to Taiwan in 2003, the majority of the materials were books, and that's how I started too on my own. Uh -huh. So one thing about Chinese, the biggest difference between Chinese and English is the tones, right? It's a tonal language. Okay. So I found with this podcast medium you get a lot more listening input, which you don't from the books. Now, the books are great for teaching characters and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to learn, you know, the tones and the rhythm of the language, I find Chinese more than other languages. It helps in a podcast type format where you get a lot of listening comprehension coming into your brain well, and see if your brain can figure it out. Well, here's the thing. Since we're almost out of time, we got yep. three minutes left. Okay. Just briefly tell me, uh, why should customers uh, come to your business? What makes your business unique compared to other podcasts, that are, like or other compared to other foreigners who are training other sure. foreigners yep. to speak Mandarin? What makes you unique? Just sure. very briefly. Yeah. So the idea behind my course is it's a progressive course because I had the same issues you did. I was also busy and didn't have time to sit and review and whatnot. So how this course works is progressive. The first set of lessons are all done in English mm -hmm. by me, and I'm teaching some words of Chinese. We use Chinese speakers for that. But then later lessons start to move from transition from English to Chinese, but we can only use the Chinese that we taught you earlier. Right. So this way we're forcing you to kind of remember what we taught you. Of course. If it ever gets too difficult, you just back up a few lessons. And so later lessons are all in Chinese, but this is all Chinese that we taught. So the idea is just by listening in the background while you're on the go, your brain can kind of piece it together. And uh, we've had thousands of students who seem to like this approach, so I okay. recommend you try it out. All right. And uh, Adam, you just tell us, like, is there any links, just very quickly? Like, sure, you can go to clo.com.tw mm -hmm. and it'll take you right there. All right. Well, Adam, thank you very much. Um, you know, is there, any, uh, is there anything else you want to share, like any shout outs or any advice? 
Yes, yeah, so since we're here in Taichung, for those of you who aren't in Taichung, uh, I recommend this as a place, the, some of the best weather in Taiwan, a uh, lot cheaper cost of living than Taipei and other places. So you get kind of a good balance between the big city mm -hmm. uh, versus not having all the costs of the big city. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah. I know it's quite, you know, it's quite brief, but both of us, we have a tight schedule today. So we're, we're trying to like uh, do things fast as possible. Plus the Jazz Festival is going to be starting in a couple of hours. You know, this whole place will be packed. Very, very packed. Like 30,000 people. Oh, I think I'll say something. Okay, well, oh. anyway. <laughs> well, anyways, guys, my name is Amax with the facts. You have now seen the AWF series. And of course, we make the unknown known. That's right. E er san si wu liu qi ba jiu jiu. Good. All right. Bye bye. Bye.